taking you back to the breaking news we brought you at the top of the hour. Special Rapporteur on Foreign Interference, David Johnston, has resigned. He says his objective was to build trust in our democratic institutions. Also saying, though, the highly partisan atmosphere around his appointment and work he had had the opposite effect. I want to bring in Wesley Wark now, intelligence expert and senior fellow at the Center for International Governance Innovation. Wesley, thanks a lot for giving me your time today. My pleasure, Angie. Nice what, to talk to you. What are your thoughts, your reaction to, to this announcement coming on a Friday evening? I'm, I'm astounded, and, and I'm astounded in particular because it was only three days ago, of course, that Mr. Johnson uh, met with a parliamentary committee uh, in hearings that lasted over three hours, and, and at that parliamentary committee very much said that he stood by his report, that he intended to continue on, that he wouldn't bow to... Um, you know, attacks against his independence and integrity, that there was important work to do. So there was every sign mm -hmm. this past Tuesday that he was going to continue. And, and you know, it's difficult to know what's, what changed his mind yeah. between Tuesday yeah. and Friday. If you could give me a sense, though, when we look at that hearing, um, I have to say things kind of went off the rails. At, at least initially, it didn't look like there was much Mr. Johnston could say. Um, the opposition certainly having a lot of questions. Why do you think, I mean, as a, that, that sort of is the million dollar question here, but why do you think now this decision coming on, you know, few day, just, a, just a few days later? I'm only speculating, Angie. Yeah. I mean, it is clear that he had the support of, of, you know, the Liberal Party and the government to continue on. Clear as well that he had no support among opposition party members. I think that that he may have been affected by Mr. O'Toole's, um, you know, privilege motion in the House of Commons last Friday, mm. and, and that may have been an indication to him that, uh, you know, if he couldn't rely on on what he might have regarded as kind of adults in the room, mm -hmm. uh, that that he had, you know, no friends among among the opposition with regard to carrying on. But I, I think really probably. On reflection, um, after that three hours of grueling testimony, he may have felt that he just didn't want to stand on a precipice right. for five months. And, Was you know, he in over nobody... his head, do you think? I, I don't think so. Okay. No, and he had good, you know, I think his report was strong, to be honest. I think he, he laid out some important issues that he wanted to study. You know, he knew that he was going to meet a lot of opposition. Uh, he seemed, you know, by every account, to be determined to continue on as of Tuesday. But, you know, maybe just on reflection after those three hours, he, he felt that, it, you know, it just wasn't going to work. And he wanted to give the government a, a chance to try and do things differently, mm. you know, and still continue. And that's what he suggested in his resignation, that resignation letter that the government, you know, should appoint a new special rapporteur and yeah. continue the work. And of course, and consult with the opposition parties on this. I want to talk about the opposition. We've seen some reaction coming from both Pierre Polyev and Jagmeet Singh. Pierre Polyev uh, putting out a tweet here. Let's just bring up that tweet so our viewers can see it, uh, saying that Trudeau has been flailing around for months trying to cover up the help uh, he got from uh, Beijing's communist uh, government. And he's going on, of course, uh, to say that he's destroyed the reputation of a former governor general to all cover up his own refusal to defend Canada from foreign inter interests and threats. He must end his cover up, stop hiding, call a full public inquiry into Beijing's uh, interference. And then Jagmeet Singh, this coming from uh, the NDP leader uh, shortly after saying David Johnston has done the right thing. Now the prime minister must call a public inquiry so that we can restore trust in our democracy. Wesley, do you think now this is a win for the opposition and they're going to get that public inquiry? Uh, I don't think they're going to get the public inquiry. I think Mr. Johnson's arguments against a public inquiry were, in fact, very, very strong ones. Um, there are real downsides to a public inquiry. And, and the biggest of them simply is that a public inquiry does not proceed at speed. Mm. Um, if the country wants to wait two or three years to hear from a public inquiry and another year or so after that to hear how the government is going to respond to it, well, that's fine. But but really, frankly, uh, is, is that uh, really going to improve uh, the ability of Canada to meet foreign interference challenges mm -hmm. before the next election? I doubt it very much. I mean, Mr. Poliev and Mr. Singh can take credit for the downfall of Mr. Johnson if they like. But I think it's incumbent on them now to come up with some ideas themselves, not just to continue to parrot this call for right. a public inquiry, come up with some ideas about how they think Canada needs to improve its capacities to meet foreign interference. Mm -hmm. And as you point out, all, if all of this does come about, it's right when an election is going to take place. So that's that that certainly is, well, that's going to trump everything there. Uh, before I let you go, now the task of the government, of course, is to replace 
Mr. Johnston. He is set to step down uh, at, at the very latest by the end of June. Uh, he yep. will be presenting his full report. Uh, who could replace him? I guess not the individual, but in terms of the criteria, because this could also see this appointment of David Johnston a mistake on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Well, well, indeed. And, and I think the big mistake, to be honest, was that uh, the prime minister and the government uh, didn't didn't go ahead with consultations mm -hmm. with the opposition parties on on the appointment in the first place. You know, they, they don't have to accept the recommendations of the opposition parties, but it would have been very wise to have gone to done those consultations, at least, you know, shown that, that they'd attempted to find some common ground. You know, I, I think we're coming up to the parliamentary recess at the end of end of June. The government probably has some time now to decide how to go ahead. The smart thing for the government, frankly, would be to say, you know, well, we're, we're going to consider next steps and we're going to wait and hear from the independent review bodies that mm -hmm. have been asked to report themselves on foreign interference and comment on Mr. Johnson's report. And we'll have to see what what David Johnson himself says in in this brief final report, as he right. calls it. He wants to, um, you know, come forward with soon. How is all of this, do you think, Wesley, reflecting on the Liberals, on the Prime Minister? We've had conversations again about some missteps. Is this another misstep? Well, I mean, I, I, the first I heard of this, frankly, Angie was a, a friend of mine sent me a, a short message uh, entitled "Gong Show." I mean, that is really what it is. It, there's there's no other way to to and you know title this. It is a gong show. It does reflect badly on on the ability of the government to to really both defend its position and come up with some some new ideas about how to defend you know deal with foreign interference. Right. So. They've got a deep hole to dig out of. And I'm sure Canadians looking again, uh, those two words we and I have heard over and over again, transparency and accountability. Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's something that Mr. Johnson, to his credit, said is, is one of the key problems. There has to be greater transparency on national security threats, not just on foreign interference, the whole range of them. Mm -hmm. Any government in office has to get better at this. Uh, previous governments have not been good at it, either liberal or conservative. Um. The opposite, we, we, as I mentioned there, we heard from Pierre Polyev, we heard from Jagmeet saying, how do you think now, because I want to bring in uh, Pierre Polyev into this, I got about 30 seconds in, um, his further response on this, is this going to be his primary? Well, you know, I, I think he's going to continue to, to dig at the government on this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's going to continue, I suppose, with his allegations that there's some deep and scandalous cover yeah. up uh, here, which is exactly what Mr. Johnson didn't find. He may continue to go down that path. Um, you know, some more sensible uh, people in the Conservative Party may try and tug at him and say, you know, is that really the responsible right. way forward? We'll have to see. Wesley, thank you so much for coming on to this hour to give us your analysis on this. Wesley Wark, intelligence expert and senior fellow at the Center for International Governance and Innovation. Really appreciate this, Wesley. An interesting Friday evening indeed.